organizational standards uh, 2.0. Um, just a few housekeeping items before we get going uh, with our webinar. Uh, first of all, this webinar will be recorded. It will be posted along with the slides on the partnership website in the next uh, couple of days in our resources uh, tab under the, or under the uh, um, uh, organizational standards section uh, where the other eight webinars have been posted uh, as well, so you can access all of those uh, at your ledger. leisure, and of course, you can also uh, just simply email me directly if you have any issues with downloading those slides. My uh, email is on the screen. Um, also, uh, uh, just to make sure everybody knows how to uh, communicate, you have been uh, muted on entry. We want to make sure that we're not uh, disturbed during the webinar. But at any time, you can enter in your questions into the chat window. Uh, so I will answer those questions uh, as they come up, and we'll pause after each standard uh, to see what questions you may have. So you can enter those at any time, and I'll just answer questions in order as they have come in as we complete each standard. Um, I also know that we are uh, actually just starting uh, the eclipse, so thanks uh, for you for, uh, for joining us. Of course, we work here at the partnership in, in uh, downtown Washington, D.C., uh, so we operate uh, in darkness uh, on a regular basis, so this is nothing new for us. Um, but thanks, all of you, uh, again, for joining us. So let's go ahead and get going um, with our ninth and final webinar in the series on uh, the organizational standards uh, 2.0 um, beyond compliance. So for our agenda, uh, we'll begin with talking about some of the partnership tools and resources. We want to make sure everybody is aware of what we have to support our agencies to make sure that they're not just in compliance with the organizational standards, but they are going beyond compliance. Um, we will then review standards 9.1 through 9.4 on uh, data collection and analysis. We'll talk about uh, uh, some general suggestions for interpretation and documentation. Uh, we'll take any questions that you have, as I mentioned, and we'll also uh, talk about some promising practices, some resources, uh, and some general guidance for going beyond compliance. Um, we'll also take any requests for additional TNTA resources. So as part of our work on the Organizational Standards Center of Excellence, we're continually, de uh, continually developing new training and technical assistance resources. So if you have any suggestions, you can just enter those in the chat window or email me directly. And of course, uh, I want to make sure everybody uh, knows about our upcoming annual convention uh, next week in Philadelphia, and we hope to see everyone there. We have a wide variety of sessions on the organizational standards and other training and technical assistance topics. Um, so again, uh, just to remind everyone, we are on the last uh, Category 9 set of organizational standards, data and analysis, which is in the operations and accountability thematic group. And just a reminder um, that the organizational standards in general provide a great framework for our agencies to think about their overall management and operations. So one of the themes we've tried to pull through this webinar series is the importance of not just looking at whether you are in compliance but how well your agency is doing in those different areas assessed by the organizational standards. And I think this particular category um, really drives home that message because um, the organizational standards aren't just about um, how you collect your data and do your analysis, it's about how well you're using your data. So you can be in compliance with the organizational standards, but not necessarily using the data that you collect very effectively. So, want to make sure everybody is aware of the resources we have to help you think about how to go beyond compliance. So uh, the first off uh, are the uh, standards of excellence. So um, the organizational standards were obviously developed by our network and are the, the basic, the ground floor minimum standards for management and operations to ensure that our agencies are well run. On the other hand, the standards of excellence are the highest standards an agency uh, can hope to achieve. They are a Baldridge-based system based on the uh, Malcolm Baldridge uh, Framework for Excellence. It's been adapted specifically for the Community Action uh, Network. 
They are 35 standards of excellence in seven different categories. And of course, we have a supporting training initiative, the Pathways to Excellence Initiative, that walks an agency through a comprehensive self-study process where you benchmark yourself uh, against those 35 standards of excellence and receive feedback from a panel of your peers about your strengths and your opportunities for improvement. However, an agency doesn't have to go through the whole pathways process to benefit from uh, the standards of excellence. You can simply uh, download those standards. They are available on our website under the Pathways uh, to Excellence tab on our home page, and you can work with them as you comply with the organizational standards. And again, look at what the gold standard is as uh, described by the standards of excellence, and they're just a great uh, self-directed resource to hopefully give you some food for thought at your agency uh, about how well you're doing when it comes to uh, the standards in general. So I would encourage all of you to take a look at the standards of excellence and also consider participating in uh, the Pathways to Excellence uh, process. So again, just a little bit more uh, description about those standards uh, of excellence. And again, they make excellent benchmarks as you're thinking about your agency's overall performance when it comes to the organizational standards. We also have additional resources on our website. Uh, the resources that I'm about to talk about are all available where you see that red arrow pointing under the Tools and Resources tab. Um, we have resources for the organizational standards. That is one of your drop-down menu uh, options. And we also have our full range of guides, manuals, and also recorded webinars um, under that Tools and Resources tab. So everything I talk about today, you can uh, pull down from under that Tools and Resources link on the Partnerships homepage. So that's where you go to get all the resources that I talked about, the Standards of Excellence, the Training and Technical Assistance Guide um, for the Organizational Standards, and some other tools and resources that I will mention. Um, Speaking of, this is a screenshot of our technical assistance guide. We have one guide for every category of uh, organizational standards, including uh, today's category, Category 9. And these guides provide you with uh, additional guidance and suggestions on the definition, interpretation, and compliance with the organizational standards. But also, they provide you with resources to go beyond compliance. They provide you with diagnostic questions that you can ask that help you answer the question not just whether you're in compliance, but how well is your agency doing when it comes to the organizational standards. And it provides assessment scales at the end of every guide to help you benchmark your performance from year to year. So we really think these are the one-stop shop, first place you should go guides for helping you with the organizational standards. And again, you can access all of these training and technical assistance guides through that link on the Partnerships homepage that I just showed you. Um, this is a screenshot of some of the toolkit sections. And again, the first half uh, of every uh, organizational standard is devoted to additional guidance on uh, just the overall background on the standard, um, documentation and compliance issues. And then the second half uh, goes through those diagnostic questions and additional resources. So uh, this is not just a TA guide for making sure you're complying with the organizational standards, but also making sure that your agency is really looking to go beyond compliance and providing you with the resources uh, and additional support you need to make sure that you're getting the most out of uh, the standards process. And one more screenshot of those assessment scales. Again, it's not a requirement, but we strongly advise agencies uh, to do that benchmarking process using those assessment scales to see how they're doing um, overall. And there's some additional resources. Uh, again, those diagnostic questions, uh, links to other guides, how-to manuals, additional resources uh, to hopefully build your overall agency capacity across all of the standards and all of the categories. Um, finally, we want to make sure everybody knows about the CSBG TTA Resource Center. This is your one-stop shop for all technical assistance resources uh, gathered from across the network. Of course, the partnership keeps all of the resources it develops on its homepage. We also collect resources from both uh, from other national partners like NASCAP, uh, CAPLAW, and ANSWER, the Association for Nationally Certified Roma Trainers, but we don't have everything on our webpage. 
The CSCG TTA Resource Center is where we upload all of the TNTA resources we come across, not just from the network, but from other nonprofit networks. So it's really your one-stop shop for all TNTA resources. Uh, it also includes a consultant bank. We have over 70 consultants that the partnership is vetted who can provide additional TNTA across a wide range of issues. Um, we have a training calendar, uh, discussion forum, and of course, uh, that comprehensive resource bank of TNTA guides, manuals, how-to guides, webinars, and a host of other resources. And we're also in the process of continually updating those resources and also building out some uh, additional functions uh, in the Resource Center um, that we will announce uh, in the next month. But we're really trying to invest in the Resource Center and make sure everybody knows um, that it is where all of the resources you need live. So with that, let's go ahead and start uh, looking at the organizational standards in Category 9. Um, so we've combined the standards for both the public agencies and nonprofit agencies because they're relatively similar for, uh, for Standard 9. So we're not listing them as we have in previous webinars side by side. They're, they're relatively similar. So, Standard 9.1 reads, the organization or department has a system or systems in place to track and report client demographics and services that customers receive. Um, so I think this is relatively straightforward in wording. Just a couple of things to call out. Of course, you're looking at your system or systems. That includes both uh, the, the hardware and the software, but also the process that you're using uh, to track and report client demographics uh, and services. And of course, uh, there are the demographics and services as well. So let's get into a little bit more detail uh, about guidance on definition and intent of the standard, and then we'll pause for questions uh, once we've gone through this discussion. So uh, just a little bit of uh, a big picture background on 9.1. Um, this standard was included in the organizational standards as a whole to ensure the agency has the ability to identify the number of people being served by the agency as a whole to collect demographic information about the services and identify the services uh, that you're providing. So it establishes that your agency is able to compare demographics with the services to find out who has received them, and it also establishes that the agency can identify the nature of the service. So hopefully the frequency, the intensity, and the, the duration. Now, of course, that's not required by the organizational standard. Um, uh, you don't have to track all of those things. But again, one of the things we're focusing on in this webinar series um, is providing some additional guidance and suggestions for thinking about how you can go beyond compliance. So in terms of guidance on making sure you have the proper documentation for Standard 9.1, um, evidence that your agency has a comprehensive data collection system in place and in use, that includes demographics and service provision, um, would include electronic or hard copies of the forms used to collect that data, um, intake, satisfaction surveys, uh, demographics, et cetera, um, screenshots of data collection, policies related to data collection, um, job descriptions that identify the collection and recording of data. So again, you're looking to document that you have a system or systems in place that would include uh, both the, the software um, and also the processes you use uh, to gather that, uh, that basic data on client demographics and the services uh, that they receive. So this is one, uh, again, because it is a little bit more big picture, there are probably some differences from state to state uh, about the documentation that is required to show you're in compliance with Standard 9.1. So as always, if you have any questions, we suggest that you check with your state CSDG uh, lead agency. They are the ones with the final authority to interpret, uh, to interpret the standards and to define the documentation uh, that you'll need to submit to show that you're in compliance. So let's go on to a couple of questions that you can ask to see if you're going beyond compliance. So first of all, um, can the people and services tracked in this standard be related to the outcomes tracked in 9.2? So again, can you connect the data you're collecting on uh, the demographics um, and services that your customers are receiving directly to the outcomes that they're able to achieve? 
Um, another thing to ask is how often is the data analyzed and by whom? So are you analyzing your performance data, uh, your basic intake data, your demographics and your service data on a monthly basis, a quarterly basis? What process do you have in place and are you doing it um, uh, routinely and in a way that helps you make sure you're improving the overall uh, programs and services that you're providing? Um, is the, uh, and as the next question, is the analysis used to inform decision making about your agency's service delivery strategies and programs? So do you have, for example, a quality improvement committee or quality improvement staff who are charged with routinely analyzing the uh, and looking at ways to improve your programs and services? Um, another question to consider, does your agency compare this data with the community needs assessment data to assess if the population being served matches the population with identified needs and if the services match the highest priority needs? So are you using your community needs assessment data, looking at it in comparison to the data you're collecting about your programs and services and making sure that you're targeting um, those high priority needs that you've identified in your community needs assessment? And then finally, does your agency identify the community as a client and track demographics of the community and services provided at the community level? So again, uh, if you do do community level work, are you also collecting data on those community level or population level uh, initiatives that your agency is working with? So before we go on, let's see if there are any questions that have come through. All right, so I'm not seeing any questions, so let's, uh, but again, you can always type in uh, those questions uh, directly and we'll answer them in the order that they come in. All right, so let's move in, uh, move on to standard 9.2, the organization, if you're a private or nonprofit agency or department, if you're a public agency, has a system or systems in place to track family, agency, and or community outcomes. So uh, again, this, is, this particular standard focuses on those six national goals. Um, just a, a, a word uh, and aside here, when the standards were developed, we were obviously operating under um, the old system using the IS report, so there is some difference uh, in, in language uh, because obviously with Roma Next Generation, um, we went from six, MP, uh, six national goals to three national goals, and also we used the annual report instead of the IS uh, report. So I just noted in a few places where that language uh, has changed. All right, so moving on to guidance on definition and intent of standard 9.2. So this particular standard ensures that the agency has the ability to identify the outcomes achieved by individuals, families, and communities. So uh, again, closely tied to that standard 9.1, but of course looking at the outcomes produced by the services you provide your customers and the communities that you serve. And this standard helps establish that the agency is able to track the individuals and families receiving services from agency intake until they have uh, achieved outcomes. And it establishes that the agency is assisting in the production of outcomes for communities as well as individuals and families and can track contributions to these outcomes. Uh, again, just uh, another aside, agencies are not required to do community level work. Uh, of course, we encourage our agencies to consider that as an option for uh, an overall service delivery strategy. But if you do community level work, uh, it's important that you have that system in place to track uh, the, the programs and strategies that you're using and the outcomes that they're producing. Right, and finally, this standard ensures that the agency has the ability to identify the outcomes achieved by the agency itself. Um, another note, uh, taking standard 9.1 and 9.2 together, there is no requirement that you are able to produce an unduplicated count. Um, that is not a requirement of the organizational standards, uh, but of course, uh, we hope that all agencies who can't produce an unduplicated account um, do have that as an objective uh, that they're working to, working forward, uh, but just wanted to uh, clarify that to make sure everybody knows you're not required to produce an unduplicated account. And of course, uh, uh, for standard 9.1 and 9.2, um, uh, again, it, they are worded in a little bit more general way, so uh, it talks, 
Standard 9.2 obviously talks about tracking outcomes, um, but it does not specify um, exactly, uh, you know, which outcomes you need to track other than uh, the, the different levels. So again, make sure to check with your state CSPG lead agency to see exactly um, how they are interpreting uh, these bigger picture standards and the documentation that you need to provide to show that you are in compliance. Um, uh, to continue with some additional discussion of Standard 9.2, um, it's important that the network be confident that there is uh, at least some general uniformity across states for the process of identifying the outcomes that are achieved using a standardized set of indicators and standard definitions uh, of those indicators. Of course, that is embodied in uh, the, the new annual report uh, that's part of ROMA Next Generation. We've had a number of uh, national webinars uh, co-hosted with NASCASP on the annual report. So I would suggest if you haven't seen those, uh, those are ho those are recordings of those are both on the partnership and the NASCASP website. Uh, but again, uh, as we move into Roma Next Generation uh, and the, uh, using the new annual report, it's important that agencies make sure they're prepared and look at related data collection and data analysis issues um, that might come up because, of course, we are uh, changing at least to some degree the way that we're collecting data to report uh, up to the national national level, to the state and national level. And again, Standard 9.2 helps ensure that the agency is reporting um, on those uh, performance indicators and national ROMA goals for which it provides services, programs, and activities. So both Standard 9.1 and 9.2 are tightly tied both to the ROMA framework uh, that you learn about if you're a nationally certified ROMA trainer and also the overall uh, ROMA Next Generation uh, framework with the national report, um, the MPIs, and our national goals. So on to uh, some additional suggestion, uh, suggestions around guidance on compliance and documentation. So what we're looking here uh, for is evidence that the agency has a comprehensive data collection system in place and in use that identifies outcomes and progress towards outcomes. So uh, again, because this is a, a more general standard, it just uh, asks you to have that system in place to track outcomes. It doesn't specify which outcomes uh, to track. Um, how uh, extensively to track those outcomes. Make sure you're checking in with your, with your state office to get specific guidance if you have any questions. Um, but examples of documentation that should help you show you're in compliance with the standard are a dashboard or scorecard or similar instrument that tracks those outcomes across your programs and services. Um, electronic and or hard copy of forms used to collect outcome data, so case notes, reports, surveys, et cetera. Um, identification of baseline data and copies of scales or other documents used to follow progress of your customers in different domains, um, screenshots of data collection, policies related to data collection, um, and or job descriptions that identify the collection and recording of data. So again, um, you may not be required uh, to submit all of this documentation. We're just trying to be comprehensive uh, to give you a range of the types of documentation you may need to show that you're in compliance. And this is also hopefully helpful in making sure that your agency is keeping track of the documentation that you'll need as we're in the second year of assessment against the organizational standards to make sure that you're in compliance. Um, some other policies and practices uh, to consider as you collect that documentation is how is um, progress towards outcomes being tracked? Um, what's being done to engage clients so that multiple assessments, um, in other words, needing to show changes in status are possible? So for example, do you uh, assess the status of your customers at different points in the uh, whole service delivery process? Um, other questions to consider are how can the agency integrate different systems from different funding sources into a unified agency-wide system? So again, we know that not all agencies are able uh, to do that, uh, especially our public agencies, for example, have some challenges because they're often required to use uh, different systems for collecting data that can make it challenging to integrate uh, all of those across all your problem, uh, programs and services. And of course, we know that uh, our nonprofit agencies also have this challenge as well. So you may not have one single integrated data system, um, but uh, this standard does encourage you to look at how you're managing your data from those different sources. 
Um, other questions to ask are, are agency outcomes included uh, as part of your overall customer tracking system? And how do the NPIs compare with performance indicators of other funding sources? So if you're tracking outcomes, say, uh, for a foundation grant that you have, how are you uh, relating or integrating data uh, across those different uh, reporting systems or requirements that you might have? Um, moving on to questions uh, that you can ask to go beyond compliance for Standard 9.2, uh, a couple of considerations to keep in mind. Um, first of all, can your outcomes that you're tracking in this standard be related to the demographics and services tracked in 9.1? So, for example, um, do you know what outcomes uh, different demographic categories of your customers are achieving across different types of services uh, that you're providing them? Um, another question to ask is, can progress towards outcomes be tracked at the end of one year and carried forward to the next year? So, for example, if you have a customer who is receiving services over a multi-year period, are you able to track that data? Um, you can also ask, how often is the outcome data analyzed and by whom? So, again, are you looking at your outcome data on a monthly basis, a quarterly basis? Do you have that quality improvement committee or quality improvement or performance management staff um, who are working with your programs and services, with your frontline staff and your managers to be routinely looking at the kind of outcomes that you're producing uh, to identify ways to improve those programs and services? Um, other questions to ask are, how is the analysis used to produce a report to the board for decision making about your agency's service delivery strategies and programs, and who's involved? We'll look at that in a little bit more detail uh, in the next standard. And does the agency compare this data with your needs assessment data to assess if the outcomes that are being achieved match the identified needs. So uh, again, for both standard 9.1 and 9.2, uh, it's important to look back to your community needs assessment data to look at the, the demographic profile of the customers you're serving, the services that are being provided to them, and the outcomes you're achieved, and comparing that back to the priorities you've identified in your community needs assessment. So before we go on to standard 9.3, let's see if any questions uh, have come in. Um, so we have a comment that the way the MPIs laid out help with S, A, and C goals, so family, uh, agency, and community goal. Module 2 in the new annual report focuses on the agency. Module 3 is the community, and Module 4 is the family. So excellent point, and I think this really shows um, how these standards are connected um, to the ROMA framework and ROMA Next Generation. Let's see if we have any other uh, questions that have come through. Um, we also have uh, another um, comment that uh, one person believes that LIHEAP is requiring uh, an unduplicated count. So again, a good reminder that you may have uh, specific programs or funding sources that require those unduplicated uh, counts. Again, the standards themselves don't require that, uh, but always a good reminder to make sure you're in compliance uh, with any reporting requirements for your individual programs and services. Um, and uh, also, uh, there's another comment um, that says, uh, we just said an unduplicated count isn't required, um, but the person thinks that the annual report does request uh, an unduplicated uh, count. Uh, again, we're just looking at the organizational standards. So, uh, of course, um, while I think uh, the, the annual report uh, does ask for that, the organizational standards do not require you uh, to produce an unduplicated count. So I just wanted to make sure um, that we were, we were clear on that just in terms of compliance for the organizational standards. All right, so let's move on to standard uh, 9.3. Uh, the organization, if you're a private or nonprofit or department, if you're a public agency, has presented to the governing board or advisory body, depending on which type of agency you are, for review or action at least within the past 12 months, an analysis of the agency's outcomes and any operational or strategic program adjustments and improvements identified as necessary. So uh, again, you need to report um, your outcome data uh, to your board at least once a year. Um, and uh, you need to be able to show any operational or strategic uh, program adjustments and improvements that have been identified as necessary. 
So uh, moving on to guidance around the definition and intent of the standard. Um, it's important for the network uh, to be confident that the data being collected is used for improvement. So again, the intent of the standard is to make sure that agencies hold themselves responsible for the outcomes they're producing, and of course the board plays a critically important role in that overall process. So making sure that you're uh, reporting that data to your board at least annually helps make sure that uh, as a network we're staying focused on those outcomes. And this particular standard establishes that the agency is analyzing its own data for the purpose of making suggestions for improvement, and it assures that the agency's board is involved in making meaningful decisions about agency performance based on accurate and well-analyzed data. So I think this is also a, a standard that uh, contains within it a good example of the potential for going beyond compliance. You could certainly uh, be in compliance with the standard if you just report that data to your board on an annual basis, uh, but I think it's uh, generally good practice to report that more frequently, perhaps um, semi-annually or even on a quarterly basis, uh, at least to make sure your board has that overall big picture of how your agency is doing. So for example, if you have an agency-wide uh, scorecard or similar reporting mechanism, that would be one way to make sure that your board is looking at that outcome data um, on a more regular basis. Um, uh, to continue that discussion, um, the standard also ensures that your agency has the ability to analyze the data and present a report to the board. And so uh, the report that you provide the board may identify suggestions for adjustments and improvements uh, needed to improve the outcomes achieved by individuals, families, and communities, and for the agency. And so this standard helps establish that the agency has the capacity to aggregate data and a process for review of the data, and it establishes that the agency has a system of board or committee review and a process for identifying action. So obviously critically important to make sure the board is involved in looking at that overall uh, set of outcomes that you've achieved. Turning to guidance on uh, compliance and documentation, um, what we're looking here for, again, is evidence that the agency has analyzed, drafted suggestions, and shared a report with the board and identified actions. So, uh, again, with the caveat that you should check with your CFB, uh, CFBG state uh, lead agency, um, some examples of documentation that you'll uh, may be uh, required uh, to provide are a copy of the uh, analytical report submitted to uh, the board or the board committee. Um, perhaps a board pre-meeting a set of materials or the, the packet, so um, what you provided the board before that meeting, um, perhaps email exchanges with the board, and documentation in board minutes of the review uh, that was done of the report and suggestions for actions discussed and uh, approved. So you almost uh, certainly have to show in the board minutes uh, that you went through this process. Um, Questions you can ask as you review those policies uh, and practices are who does the analysis of the data and is the board involved in that analysis? So for example, is there a preliminary step before you do that formal uh, board review? Do you have a board committee um, that might look at data a little bit more routinely or work with the data that you're eventually going to report up to the full board? Uh, again, back to that earlier discussion, how often is this done? Um, how is the report to the board prepared? So are you perhaps reporting on a semi-annual or quarterly basis uh, instead of just once a year? Um, another question to ask is how does the agency integrate the data from different systems to produce an agency-wide analysis? So uh, again, do you have something like an agency-wide uh, scorecard or a report card? some type of instrument that aggregates all that data together um, so it's a little bit easier for the board to see the big picture um, as opposed to, to reporting out program by program, service by service. And does the analysis of individual, family, and community outcomes include agency outcomes in context? So uh, again, are you looking at the outcomes that your agency uh, achieves as well? Um, moving on to questions you can ask to go beyond compliance. Um, does the agency have a process for tracking the actions that follow the board review? So do you have a process in place to make sure that, uh, that those actions are actually being followed through on? 
um, is there documentation of reports to the board on results of actions taken? So again, do you have that system of accountability in place where you're reporting on follow-up to the board? Um, does the agency analysis of outcome data include relationships with demographics and services tracked in 9.1? So in that overall picture to the board, are you reporting on that big picture of, of data, not just the outcomes, um, but also the demographics and the services that are being provided? Um, is there multi-year data included in the analysis? In the analysis? So uh, again, a suggested practice is to make sure when you report to your board um, that you're also giving them information uh, on the last year or two of outcomes so they can see overall trends. Uh, just a snapshot of a point in time, um, while that might be helpful to some extent, I think isn't as good as a report that shows how you did the previous year um, and ideally the year before last. I think a, a three-year period is generally a, a good rule of thumb, and that allows the board, it helps the board to see whether those outcomes are, are improving, staying the same, uh, or perhaps are falling off. And then lastly, does the board refer back to the community needs assessment data? to assess that the agency is making a difference related to uh, those identified needs. So uh, again, a, a good uh, suggested practice is when you have this discussion with your board, you're ultimately including uh, at least some discussion of your needs assessment to see how you're doing uh, in relationship to those overall community needs um, that you identified in your, uh, in your needs assessment process. Um, we've also included here some additional resources uh, that you can access. Uh, the Community Toolbox, which is hosted by the University of Kansas, has some great resources on uh, providing feedback and data analysis. Um, uh, uh, another link, uh, looking at the difference between data and information, giving you some uh, helpful resources there. And uh, the last link, uh, the structure of a data analysis report, uh, gives you a model, at least a general model. This wasn't designed specifically for a community action agency, um, but it does provide you with a sense of what might go into that data analysis report you provide your board. Uh, again, just something, again, to look at and compare with how you're providing uh, that data to your board currently. Okay, so let's see if we have any questions that have come in. All right, so not seeing any uh, additional questions. And again, you can submit those at any time. Let's move on to our last standard, standard 9.4. The organization, if you're a private or nonprofit agency or department, if you're a public agency, submits its annual CSBG information survey data report, and it reflects client demographics and organization-wide or CSBG-funded outcomes, depending on whether you are a nonprofit or a public agency. Uh, of course, we have shifted from the IS report to the annual report, so just wanted uh, to, to note that. And my guess is um, we might, uh, um, um, would, would be surprised if we didn't update the language uh, in the organizational standards um, to reflect that change. All right, so moving on uh, to guidance on the definition and intent of Standard 9.4. Um, the intention of this standard is to ensure that each agency has um, submitted accurate and appropriate data for your CSBG uh, information systems, now the, now the annual report. So again, uh, as I noted, uh, uh, some update of uh, what the standard is asking for, um, but I'm pretty sure folks know uh, that we've moved forward from the IS uh, report to the annual report uh, given the changes with Roma Next Generation. And uh, what the standard does is it establishes, through the reporting of your data, a standardized format for reporting on the various activities and outcomes from our agencies across the country, and it ensures that our local agencies have systems to produce accurate data that is reported to your state office. So again, I would direct you uh, towards those webinar recordings of uh, the webinars that uh, both NASCAS, the partnership, and also the webinars we've done in collaboration with NASCAS. Those are on the partnerships and NASCAS website um, if you want uh, additional discussion of the annual report in Roma Next Generation. Um, Standard 9.4 also ensures that the agency has the ability uh, to overcome data collection challenges caused by different practices in different departments or sections of the agency. 
and it establishes that your agency has the capacity to collect demographic data from individuals and families receiving services, and it establishes that the agency has a system for collecting information um, for all of the effect, uh, all of the sections of the annual report and your, your MPI data. Um, so guidance on compliance for standard 9.4. Um, evidence that the agency has submitted its annual report in a timely way would simply be electronic or hard copy uh, proof of uh, the, your annual report submission, um, verification of receipt of the report from your state office, um, or email exchanges with your state office regarding submission uh, of the report. So basically uh, any documentation that shows um, that you have uh, fully submitted your annual report uh, data. Um, policies and practices uh, that you can consider as you go through compliance with the standard um, would be how is the accuracy of the data monitored at the local agency level? So what are you doing to make sure that the data you're reporting in the annual report is accurate? Um, does the report include only unduplicated individuals or family served? So again, as someone pointed out, um, the, uh, the annual report uh, uh, does ask for that unduplicated count data. Um, and finally, what documentation of community level data is collected to support the information reported? So uh, again, we have that section in the module in the annual report that allows you to report on community level work. So make sure that you're collecting uh, the appropriate data that will let you report if your agency does um, uh, engage in community level strategies. Make sure that you're collecting the data that will allow you uh, to report on those efforts uh, when you submit your annual report. So just a few sections here um, are around going beyond compliance, two questions to ask. First, does the agency have a process for using the information contained in the report for future actions? Um, do you compare with your community needs assessment data to assess if your agency is making a difference related to the identified needs? So when you submit your annual report data, are you looking back, just like we suggested uh, to do with the data you collect for other standards in this category, are you looking back to your community needs assessment um, to see how you're addressing those needs uh, that you have identified? And then finally, does the agency have a process for comparing data from prior years to the current report? So again, it's always a good practice to look at your trended data over time um, to see where you're improving, where things uh, are holding serve, and where you might not be achieving uh, the same level of outcomes that you've achieved in the past. So, Again, I think a good illustration of the importance of not just seeing this as a check the box exercise, did we submit our, our annual report data, um, but making sure that you're using that data to look at overall agency performance, comparing it to previous years, comparing it to your community needs assessment, and really getting the most out of that data that you're reporting on um, by making sure that you're using it for program improvement and performance improvement activities within your agency. So uh, with that, uh, I want to make sure you have uh, contact information for both uh, myself and our senior associate, uh, Courtney Kohler, who works on our Organizational Standards uh, Center of Excellence. Um, I'm looking to see if we have any other questions that have come through. And of course, uh, you can always uh, simply write to me directly at that email if you have any additional questions. And also wanted to make sure that everybody knows uh, now that we have completed the nine webinars in our organizational standards uh, webinar series, um, we will be shortly announcing our next webinar series. We'll be focusing on the community needs assessment process doing a deeper dive. So be on the lookout for that announcement. Uh, with those webinar dates, we're doing a four or a five webinar series. We haven't decided exactly which one, but we should be announcing that uh, shortly um, and are really looking forward to this because I think it's an opportunity uh, to focus in on how our agencies are doing with the community needs assessment. Um, we do have one closing uh, comment. Many of our agencies have identified community level needs and can collect count data but are struggling with rate of change data that would be statistically reflective of their work. Can they just report counts and not rates in the new annual report? Um, that is my understanding uh, that there is a way just to report uh, those, those counts of data 
um, and and not uh, not overall rates. Um, but I can get back directly to the person who asked this question uh, to uh, to confirm this, and also I can uh, double check with uh, with NASCAS. So I will uh, check in with you once I confirm that uh, with uh, with Jackie or over at NASCAS. So again. Thank you uh, so much for tuning in this afternoon or, or late morning, depending on where you are. This concludes our nine webinar series on the organizational standards, and we'll be moving forward with our next webinar series on the community needs assessment that will be announced um, after we wrap up our annual convention in Philadelphia. Hope to see you all there and have a great week. Uh, and uh, again, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out to us directly if there's anything we can do to support your work. So thank you all very much and have a great week. Hope to see you in Philly.